All right, let's jump on the SDM uh, real quickly here. Here's what we have for a uh, topology, if you can call it that, in GNS3. Basically, this cloud is just allowing my local um, laptop to connect to the virtualized router R1 over uh, F0 slash 0. Okay, so here we are with the SDM launcher. The fast ethernet interface on router 1 will be 10.1.1.1. I'm going to use HTTPS. I did configure this device, I think, for both, but I prefer to use HTTPS and click Launch. I'm not going to go through all the steps of logging in here. Uh, there is another video that is for setting up SDM that will show you all this. Uh, just suffice it to say, I will be using a username, Packet Lab, for the password of Packet Lab as well. Okay, and so here we are in the SDM. And to get to the one-step lockdown, um, as I said in the slide portion, you want to go to Configure. And then on the left-hand side here, you will see the Security Audit. Go ahead and click that. And you've got your Security Audit on the top. We'll be using that as well today. And then on the bottom, you have your one-step lockdown. And it tells you what one-step lockdown is meant to do. We're painfully aware of that since you've just gone through the uh, quote-unquote theory slides with me. So let's uh, not waste any more time and jump in here. Click on our one-step lockdown. Okay, here's that warning pop-up that I told you about. Uh, this will lock down your router. If you want to undo some of the settings, you can use the following options. Talked about this, and we will run through this as well, uh, that you can go and run the security audit, which is right up here, undo security configurations. Or, and I'll show you this because this really isn't an option. It, it is, but it would be so painful. You'd have to know exactly what was done to your router. That it's kind of a cop-out. Uh, let me cancel this real quick because I wasn't going to go over general SDM, but I do want to show you one thing that um, if you haven't played with SDM before, I want you to know about. So we're going to go ahead and cancel this. What I want to show you is that what you want to do before you work in SDM is go up to edit click on preferences and on this preferences by default this first checkbox is not clicked everything else is and you can do whatever the hell you want with this I don't care click this make sure that this is enabled preview commands before delivering to the router it adds one extra step what it does is it shows you what configuration is going to be sent to the router and that's good to know to see what's being configured you can use as a learning tool uh, if it says to configure a banner then you check to see what the commands are and like there you go now you know what the iOS commands are for configuring a banner but uh, we're gonna be using this so I just want to make sure that I, that you are aware of this feature and that you had it enabled if you're following along at home okay so let's try this one step lockdown once again click we've read this let's go ahead and say yes and let's see what's going on it's going to take a while for this to think about what it's doing. And there you go. And we can see it tells us what it's going to do. So it's going to disable finger, uh, disable pad, disable TCP and UDP small servers. Uh, you can look through this. It's good to know what's going on here. Might be good to know for the uh, CCNA security exam. I don't think they're going to want you to memorize all these, but it's a good idea to take a look at this and see what's going on and normally this would be your last step you'd click deliver and it would configure your router in our case since we chose to have the commands be shown to us before they're delivered to the router we will have an additional step speaking of routers let me bring this guy up okay and this is R1 I just want to show you there's not a whole lot on here basically all I have configured on here is well timestamps is a uh, default it's complete defaults put a host name Put logging buffered. I just did my normal stuff on there. Uh, you do see this RSA certificate. That's because I enabled HTTPS here. And these are settings that, you know, if you've gone through the SDM video setting this up that you have to set up, you have to configure HTTP server, HTTPS server, stumbling on my letters there. And then uh, make sure that you have the authentication set up for local. And that will refer to your local username password database and uh, why am I not seeing it I should have something that says username on there um, I'm just blind it's here I know it's here oh jeez sorry about that I thought I was losing my mind it's usually further up the top uh, this certificate took up some space so I have um, user packet lab uh, with a password packet lab I didn't bother to encrypt this obviously and privilege level 15 so that's how SDM is getting to the router I just wanted to show you this that there's nothing special on here um, 
no services disabled probably this is the most configuration on there they've got login synchronous and privilege level 15 and you know exec blah 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 let's issue our one step lockdown so we click deliver and here's where that preference comes in handy so we can see what's going to be sent here and if you remember back to the slide portion the Cisco documentation said that um, AAA was not enabled. Well, you're going to send a command that says AAA new model. That turns on AAA, and it's going to use local authentication. It's going to use that username, password that you have configured already. But uh, you can see it sets up methods for that, and it goes under your VTY lines, and it says if you're going to log in, you need to log in with that username, password. It also does it on the console line and on the auxiliary line. So you do need to be aware of this feature because if you've got some other type of authentication set up and you turn this on there's a chance you could lock somebody out if you're playing around and uh, in this case you really wouldn't lock somebody out unless they didn't know that username password already but well I take that back okay in this case on the console line I currently don't have an authentication method so if uh, Joe Blow connects to this router he can get in without um, knowing the username and password of Packet Lab Packet Lab. Once I've enabled this, if he tries that, he's going to have to log on with that those credentials. So keep that in mind. I mean, it is securing it, but it is also changing the security structure of your your router. Now your your router may have been unsecure before, but all right. So here's some of the services it turns on: password encryption, and there's another series of videos that goes through all of these so you'll know exactly what they are I'm not going to go into detail on them with them today kinda of similar to what we saw with auto secure so do not click this do not save running config to the startup config we've already saved that out so our startup config is the same as the running config we click deliver you can see it's sending 54 commands okay it's done so now if we go on to our router show run and we can see that started enabling services like this TCP keep alive we've got this authentication failure we've got now a password minimum link six it's a ton of stuff on here and because I <laughs> let this banner disconnect immediately you are not an authorized user and we can see the commands that were added if we do show archive config differences and what this command does it depends on your platform and iOS version whether this is available or not just to keep that in mind what it's going to do is it's going to do a uh, comparison of configurations in this case we're going to choose system and what's weird is it, it doesn't have system startup it has system memory that's your starting config and then system running configuration so this command is going to change I'm sorry it's going to compare the configurations in uh, the startup configuration and the running configuration and tell us what the differences are it'll think for just a bit and here you go and these pluses mean that these are these are commands that are currently in the running configuration that are not in the startup configuration so these are the commands that uh, one step lockdown added to our router and you can see there's quite a few and this brings up an important uh, point the startup configuration cannot type today if you see that's that's that simple configuration that was on there before prior to implementing the um, one step lockdown I went ahead and wrote this configuration and that is what I would strongly suggest that you do when you're playing with this or God forbid you're using this in a production environment write that because right now the changes that one step lockdown has made are applied to the running configuration our startup configuration is the configuration that was on here prior to those changes being made so if something goofs up completely all we have to do is reload this router when we reload it will load up the starting configuration it will get rid of the running configuration that's a hard rollback but it is a safety net and you do want to have that because as we'll see this can get ugly to uh, start removing some of this one-step lockdown configuration 